So, you have an M. Night Shyamalan movie for me. Yes, sir, I do. So as you know, I am M. Night Shyamalan. No, you're not. Well, you can't prove that I'm not. I feel like I could, though. Well... Anyway, as long as you have an M. Night Shyamalan-style movie for me, I'm listening. I sure do. So right off the bat, I was thinking this could be a good movie for Bruce Willis to star in. Oh, uh, you just said the magic words. The Sixth Sense made a bunch of money, so I'm on board already. Wow, so I don't even have to pitch this? Nope, it's gonna sell itself. Let's do this. Awesome. <clears throat> All right, I guess you could pitch me the movie. Okay, cool. So we're gonna start the movie off with a bunch of random facts about comic books. Why? I don't know. I guess just to establish that comic books are a thing. I guess that's important to establish because comic books aren't exactly mainstream. Yeah, people aren't exactly lining up to go see Marvel movies. And they never will. Anyway, so we're gonna meet the main character, David Dunn, on a train, and he's, you know, actively trying to cheat on his wife. Oh my god, is that really the best way to get us to root for the main character? Yeah, because he's gonna get rejected by the woman, so we're gonna feel bad for him. I kind of have more respect for the woman that rejected him, to be honest. Oh, well, don't get too attached, because the train's gonna crash and she's gonna die. Oh, my lord. Yeah, everyone's gonna die except David. He's not gonna have a scratch on him. How is that possible? Well, that's actually the premise of the movie. It's this guy realizing that he might be a superhero. Oh, interesting. What are his powers? He's super strong, he's pretty much unbreakable, and if he touches people, he can see the bad stuff they've done. Very cool. And what does he do when he realizes he's a superhero? Well, that's the thing. The entire movie is gonna be him realizing he's a superhero. Oh, it feels like that's a pretty simple thing to test. Yeah, it is. So I had to figure out a bunch of ways to stretch this out to be a feature-length movie. Oh, how'd you manage? Well, for one thing, the characters stare in silence for about half the runtime. That'll help. Yeah, they'll even dramatically pause in the middle of sentences sometimes just to stretch things out even more. Oh, uh, unnecessary dramatic pauses in the middle of sentences are... Tight. Yep, and we're also gonna have some doctors explain things very slowly. Oh, we are? Yeah, the movie actually starts with a doctor taking three minutes just to say that a baby has broken limbs. Wow, taking a long time to get to the point, yeah. And then after the train crash, another doctor is gonna take another three minutes just to explain to David that he's the sole survivor. Extremely slow paced. Oh yeah, of the first 12 minutes, half of them are just doctors slowly explaining things. Wow. And we're also gonna have David slowly realize that he's never been sick or injured his whole life. How could he possibly have never realized that before. I don't know. Fair enough. And so yeah, we're gonna stretch that single realization out over three or four scenes. Oh, we are. Yeah, he's gonna talk to the secretary at work and put in a request with his boss to see how many sick days he's taken. Because he doesn't remember. Exactly. Then he's gonna talk to his wife, ask her if she remembers him being sick or injured. It's gonna be a whole thing. Jeez. And then his boss is gonna come see him like, yeah, no, you never took any sick days. So just out of curiosity, how long would this movie be if you didn't pad the runtime like this? Probably about 10 minutes to be honest. Yeah, sounds about right. Anyway, so we're also gonna have this guy, Elijah Price, and he's obsessed with David, and he's trying to convince him that he's a superhero. How come? Well, he has a disease called osteogenesis imperfecta, which means his bones are super brittle and break easily. Oh, yeah, that's rough. Yeah, and so his whole thing is that maybe David is the opposite of him, and he's, you know, a superhero. Isn't osteopetrosis the opposite of osteogenesis imperfecta, meaning there's a hardening of the bones? I don't know. Nobody knows. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, and actually, it can lead to bone fracture. What are you, a doctor or something? No. So then get off my back. The opposite of Elijah's thing is that you're Superman. Fair enough. Yeah, so David's son is gonna get super excited and try to shoot him to prove he can't get hurt. Oh my god. And so David has to convince his son not to shoot him. It's gonna be nuts. But is David gonna secretly test something a little less intense on himself to prove that he can't get hurt? Well, no, because then he'd know that he's a superhero and the movie would be over. Just seems like a logical thing he would do. Not if you want this movie to be feature length. Yeah, I guess I do want that. And what were you thinking in terms of casting for the Son. Well, if you could get Haley Joel Osment, he was great in The Sixth Sense. I feel like it would be a little confusing to have him and Bruce Willis in a movie together again. Well, then maybe you could find a kid that looks like Haley Joel Osment, but mixed with Julianne Moore. That is oddly specific, but I'll do my best. Oh yeah, and we're also gonna have David realize that when he touches people, he has these psychic visions. He never realized that when he touches people, he gets visions. That's what we're going with. This guy's pretty oblivious to most things. Yeah, and he also finds out that he almost drowned when he was a kid. He didn't remember that? Nope, and so he's gonna call Elijah like, I can't be a 
superhero, I almost died when I was young. Well, this guy doesn't remember anything about his past. Yeah, no, he pretty much learns about his own past at the same time as us. For a superhuman character, he really has a subpar memory. He sure does, but eventually he's gonna build up the courage to, you know, go murder a bad guy. Oh, neat. Yeah, and then we're gonna reveal the twist ending. Oh, you've got one of those in this movie too? Of course, because the Sixth Sense made money. So what is it? We're gonna reveal that Elijah is the one that made the train crash. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess that's pretty good. Yeah, and he's been causing a bunch of disasters just hoping to find somebody like David. Must have been hard to wrap up the movie after that twist. Actually, it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, I figure I could just freeze frame and slap some text on there explaining what happens to the characters. That feels kind of lazy, actually. What are you, a doctor or something? What? Subject change. So who should we get to play Elijah? Oh, well, maybe Samuel L. Jackson could be a good choice. Seriously? Yeah, I mean, I could see him as an intense guy that wants to track down superheroes, can't you? No, that doesn't sound like the kind of thing Sam Jackson would do at all. Hey guys, it's Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that pitch meeting. If you did like it, we have a lot more of these on the channel. And you can let me know in the comment section what other movies you'd like to see these pitches for. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all those things. Maybe share it on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, check back soon for a new pitch. Bye bye.